channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. Uh, another unboxing. This is the last of the unboxings, he says. <laughs> Sorry, this is the last of the planned unboxings. Should something come along that takes my interest, there might be some more unboxings. But this is the last of my planned unboxings, the ones that I knew were coming, waiting for deliveries. It's by XFly. It's not the first thing I've had from XFly. It was purchased via my local model store. So when I went into my model store, I took two aircraft in. And I've bought one brand new box out, which was literally delivered just a few hours ago. I've no idea what it's going to be like. The box was heavy, four kilograms I reckon, but it's big, so it's awkward to carry, move around. It only just managed to get into the room that I wanted to do the filming in. Uh, but we've done it. Let's go take a look at the unboxing of this new aircraft from XFly. I've literally just picked this up, loaded it into the back of my car, driven home from the model shop, and we're going to be doing the unboxing. Quite a large shipping box. Let's get this outer carton removed and see what's inside. X-Flying Twin Otter, 1.8 metre wingspan. They are 70.9 inches. Absolutely fantastic. As soon as I saw this, I thought, yes, I've got to get a Twin Otter. I had the E-Flight Twin Otter and I enjoyed flying that while I had it. It was a little bit of a small aircraft. I think its wingspan was just over the metre. This one, 1.8, just released, literally. Shipped to my hobby store and there it is. Now, the box is quite big. Uh, I'm still going to be able to move it to one side and we are still going to take the parts out and take a good look at them. But while the box is here, I want to flip it around so we can just take a look at the specifications. This is of course the Twin Otter DHC-6. I didn't get the optional floats. Actually that reminds me, I took my Twin Otter, the Horizon Hobby one, the E-Flight Twin Otter in, to the shop to sell it. And I forgot to take the floats in. I must take them into the shop today so they're with it. Uh, so what is this? It's a foam and of course with plastic parts. 1.8 metre wingspan as I stated. It's got information there like wing loading, wing area. Flying weight 3.7 kilograms. That's quite heavy. Getting close to 4 kilograms. Prop size 3 blade 10 by 7 times 2. Quite a big prop as well. Uh, motors 3541 KV550s. Two 40 amp speed controllers. Even lifts the centre of gravity there. Look, 61 millimetres from the leading edge. Five to ten minutes flying. That's going to be fun. What's it got here? We've got two 30 gram servos, five 9 gram servos. Obviously, the landing gear is fixed, but it does have a steerable nose wheel. Uh, five channel, aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, steering, flaps. They say it's intermediate skill level. This takes a 6S 5000 to 6000 milliamp hour battery. <laughs> it said build time 15 minutes. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, some nice pictures on the box. The box looks really high class. I love the yellow and blue colours as well. It should stand out. In fact, it's got white on the underside. Yellow, blue stripe with white on the underside. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. Should have lights and everything as well. Enough of looking at boxes. This is an unboxing. So let's unbox this plane and take a close look at all the parts. Okay, there we are. This doesn't have floats. You can see the gap in the box here. This is where the floats would run across. It is an option. I didn't go for that option. But what I will say is that this is packaging where you have things on the bottom of this foam packaging here, right on the other side of it. If you get one, make sure you check the bottom of the foam packing crate because it's not all here. 
it's tucked around the back and we'll take a look at that right now while we've got that sitting there. First thing that came off from the back are the wheels, the landing gear. Wheels. Metal landing gear. No real suspension except the spring in it. Very nicely moulded plastic fairing here. Three inch wheel. That's quite a nice big wheel. C-clips holding them on, as we should all know by now. So let me try and get this in focus rather than focusing what's in the background. There's a C-clip there. Little bit of glue. I would say foam tack, but I'm stopping using foam tack because it's too expensive. So a little bit of foam glue just on the metal piece and the C-clip will help keep that in place and make sure it doesn't accidentally get knocked off. They are quite smooth running, no bearings or anything, but it's it's fine. And the same on the other side here, they've got a little C-clip. Always put a dab of glue on that just to hold it in place if it gets any shocks. But the other item that came out the back of the box are the prop spinners. They're, well, as you can see, they're sprayed blue, actually. They're not plastic blue. They're white plastic, but they're sprayed blue. Got a back plate. Looks like it screws through the middle, but they do have air holes in them. Quite nice. Well, the other thing that came out the back is the nose wheel. And I'm telling you what, that nose wheel, that's got to be an inch and a half. And it's really free. Uh, but again, drop a glue here. Don't need it there. Look, it's just it's a pin that goes through and you put the C-clip here. So just to drop a glue there. Make sure you don't get it on the shaft and you'll be OK. This is all aluminium and you can see it's sprung. Servo here. It looks like metal gear, but I will check that. And the steering column all set up. That came from the back of this polystyrene piece. One last thing that came from the back is the nose cone. The nose. I guess it's that way. This whole piece here is hard plastic. It's got rivet details on it panel lines it's uh yeah the blues on the underside the blue and the white uh, that's a sticker very nicely applied yellow is paint also very nicely applied and it's got panel lines in it now the nose is magnetic it's got two magnets that hold that on yeah, it, it looks great. The foam feels lovely and it's quite dense. There are some mould marks, the little injection marks. But it's great, looking good. I'm going to move that to one side, crack it open, look at things as they come out. All right, first thing out of the box. Oh, it's a bit bleached. I think that's too dark. Let's try that one. There we go. Is the instruction manual in a plastic bag. I keep these bags, they come in really handy. Also in here is a strip of Velcro. We also have two push rods with ball link clevises on the end. And what looks like two different size selection of Allen wrench driven screws or bolts because they're flat ended and then you've got your velcro and we've got the manual now I do want to take a look through the manual because it might have some answers to questions I have so here's the manual and I love getting real paper manuals I really do instead of the online stuff Chinese in the back and then English at the front. 
must read section, warnings and things like that. Contents. Quite a few parts, well, except we don't have floats, so we're not interested in this bit. But here's the layout of all the parts. Specifications that we've gone through. 15 minutes to build it, I can't believe that. Lovely diagrams. They're FMS quality diagrams, they really are. Lots of screwing. There's an actual manual copy editor change there. They've handwritten 20 instead of the 16mm. <laughs> Not interested in the float parts, to be honest. Battery goes in through the top hatch. They are 61 millimeters from the leading edge. It's a straight wing, so you can measure it back from any location. Position the CG, um, so you can balance it and test it out. Here's your movements. Here's your low high rates, or high low rates, for aileron, elevator, rudder and flaps. Got them all in millimetres and in percent movements. As you all should know by now if you watch my videos, high remains high, low becomes medium for me. And then I stick a third one in, which is my own low, which will be less than their movements here on their low. So I do all that when I set it up. ESC and parts and that's it. So it's all screwing and no gluing. Here's the prop, one of them. Zebra prop. And we've got another one here. So we'll only look at one because they're both the same. Let's put that one over there. This prop, it doesn't have any size that I can see on it, but it did tell us. I think it's a 10 by 7. Very nice looking, rounded blades. What's really cool about this? Look at this one, front and back, and it is paint. These are painted on stripes. The white stripes are painted onto the black. Fantastic. Holy moly, that's a big one, said the actress to the bishop. More, no, 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 we won't go on to that. But my goodness, look at that. It's a massive fin and rudder setup. It's obviously the back part of the aircraft, duh. But my god, that's as big as my Carbon Z T150 Cessna uh, fin and rudder. It is that big. It's as big as a two meter one. My wow, I mean, that is awesome. And the quality, the quality of it is. Mm, White is foam, except for this part. Blue is paint. The white and yellow is stick-on decals. But they're trimmed. The movement of the hinged rudder is really smooth. Servo sitting there, that servo I guess would be for your elevator. It's got little vortex generators built into the foam. It's got some sort of metal loop thing here. It's got an LED at the top. Now this LED is just the LED but it's molded it's got a molding around it which is nice don't know what this little hook thing is just a bit of scale detail got 8Q or Q8 if you read it backwards Q8 was a show that Spike Milligan used to uh, host here in the UK but yeah it's 8Q dash something servos already built in Metal gear servos, no doubt about it. Let's come on to this side. TMV, another servo, little 
vortex generators down here as well as these ones up here sides the same I love the corrugation in the phone that is awesome yeah real hinges absolutely top quality now um, obviously looks like you've got a spar that goes into there that plugs into the fuselage you've got wires in here I'm not going to get them out there'll be a servo wires one says elevator one says rudder so I'm guessing this is the rudder because this is where the horn is here ball link but that is just massive this thing's going to be a beast three spars I'm uh, pretty sure they're carbon different lengths different thicknesses so there's one spar there I'm not sure what that's for there's another spar here a bit thinner a bit longer and there's uh, another spar here a bit thicker and longer I guess this is the main wing spar one of these will be the fuselage spar and one of them will be your tailplane spar, tailplane elevator spar. So three spars. I think these, yeah, it says right wing, left wing on them. These are metal. And I think they're the wing supports that go from the fuselage up to the wing uh, you have two of them left and right and it says wing on them so I think that's what they are so they're metal stuff oh wow I've got to calm down here I know I keep going on about the other twin otter I used to have it is a Ryzen Hobby E-Flight 1.1 I think meter uh, the wing was very thin the plane was very small take your butchers at this <laughs> huge and it's deep it, it makes the other one look crazy small Wow, and it's so, so smooth. And it's just, I keep saying the word beautiful in these, and I shouldn't. It's great. All right, let's take a look at this wing. Business end of the wing. It's got an XT60 male plug in it there. I'm guessing that's for the motor. It's got the D connectors. I see more and more aircraft are coming out with this D connector great idea it's got the little cutouts where the wing matches the fuselage and then you screw down and of course the place with the spar oh, don't look at the underside it's even better <laughs> lovely mouldings Lovely mouldings. This is hard plastic. The exhausts. There's your motor. A nice big motor. Speed controller right in the airflow at the front. There's your prop nut. Spinner goes over that. Look at this. Look how cool that looks. Let's get it in focus. Come on. So you've got an LED in there with a complete cover over it sprayed blue with a frosted lens cover that's going to look fantastic when it's on blue is paint yellow is paint it's got a wing fence yellow plastic Let's take a look at this end Yet again, it's got an LED in the end here, but it's got a lovely plastic lens cover over it. Pear drop shape. Painted blue and frosted. My goodness. But here's the real cool bit. 
Look at that! It's all real hinges. And I am talking serious hinging here. Are they connected? Yeah, they're already connected. Look at that. Now, I think, and I stand corrected if I'm wrong, but they're Fowler flaps. Or they're through flaps, because the air can go through here as well. You've got a convex rounded end and that matches the concave part of the wing. This is great. Love the corrugation on it. Horn already connected, already linked in, embedded into the wing. There's your servo cover. There's your push rod. You're not going to see anything. That's great. This is the connector for your wing support here on the nacelle. Or just on the, yeah, it's really good. Air cooling vent, nice blue paint underneath. The rest of it's yellow, yellow tape covering up the wiring, blue tape covering up the, the blue side. In fact, it's one piece of tape, so I guess they just painted over it. Uh, another servo cover, another connected push rod that's covered in. And that's for your ailerons. And strangely enough, they've actually got cutouts in here for where you can put your screw in to take the horn off, but you'd have to take that cover off anyway. There are moulding points on the underside of the wing, the big round ones. Obviously it's got spars already embedded in it. It is great. And of course, the idea is you transport it to the field, wings in a wing bag, and then you just plug them in, screw them on, and off you go. That is so cool. That is massive. That is so cool. Yeah, and they come in pairs. Here's the other. I mean, the quality is awesome. It really is. I love the corrugation in the moulds. Okay, there's a little bit of where they've had, had to divide a line and they sprayed it blue, then they've over sprayed it yellow. But you can hardly notice it. Wing fence, plastic wing fence in there. Everything's the same. Speed controller tucked down there, motor mounted. Exhaust ports are hard plastic. Here you are, here's your XT60 connector for your speed controller. There's your D connector. Yeah, that's the wing spar there, actually. You can see that's already embedded in the wing. The mounting point for your wing supports, the metal ones. Oh, wow, it is so nice. Absolutely plain, top and bottom. No, uh, no logos or anything yeah. here we have one of the tail planes and the elevator Jeez. blue paint all over corrugated mouldings this is a great big fence already set up already on there plastic here's your points where you screw in that's for a spar and you've got to have a allen wrench type connector just there to connect the two halves of your elevator together ball link and real hinged support spar little one across there that's really really nice Yeah, lovely. You get two of them. The box packing is again, a, it's an art, it's a piece of art. There we are, this is the other side. So it goes that side. That's the female part. Six sided, not four, doesn't matter. That's where your spar goes. This is where you put, drop your screws through let it screw in, plastic piece there real hinges on everything, everything's hidden away 
It's it's another one of those semi scale things. It's lovely. <gasps> Look at this. Yep, here she is. Here's the fuselage. Uh, my God. <laughs> Look at that! Right, I don't know how to do this. Uh, obviously your nose can go over there, your nose cone. And it's got magnets either side to hold it on. It's got all of the little plastic pieces, pito tubes, aerials, all ready installed. Another pito tube here. Here's the other fuselage side of that mount. Here's your other aerials. So you're going to have to be careful not to knock and bash them. Uh, windows are all clear, extremely clear. No glue over any of them. Here's the mount for the other wing support, the other end of it. Trans Maldivian. Clear cockpit, little paint smudge there, I'm not too worried about that. Moulded in doors, rivets, absolutely brilliant. Well, the yellow is paint, the blue and the white are stickers, except the underside which is bare foam. Oh, I say bare foam, it's actually glossy so it looks like it might have a cover or something on it. Yeah. Look here at the wing mounts. You have your XT60 and you have your D connector. Plug those in, push it on, uh, and you're screwing into brass. Yep, screwing into brass. This is upmarket. I tell you, this is cool. And you got the same on this side XT60. D connector, spar, two supports there for the wing to be screwed into and on the underside of these you've got brass threads. <clears throat> I mean, uh, this is so well done. I was actually looking at this and I thought it didn't have anything there and I had to tap it because it looked just like a hole. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, as I said, the top, these are already in place. And here's your battery hatch. Just here. So this piece that's sticking out, you push it forward, lift the hatch up. There is <coughs> gallons of room in there. Absolutely huge amount of room. But not only that, I don't know if you're going to see it. There is in fact cockpit detail. Look at that. So you could get a camera mount in there up the front and you could be looking out of the cockpit and get some instrumentation. I might play with that. <clears throat> but lovely place for your battery. Two straps. Um, I don't know where everything goes back there. Everything should come out forward. So there it is. There's your power connector, that joins up onto an XT90. That's got some sort of thing here in it. Oh, that's going to be for your lights, I guess. And then you've got all your usual uh, suspects. Elevator, rudder, throttle, flaps, ailerons and lights. Yeah, very, very nice. Indeed, loads of space in there, and it's uh, goes all the way back down there as well. Take a look through there. In fact, you take a look through there. You can see it all. Yeah. That's nice. Lovely hatch goes on really easily. Let's see back this end. This is where your spar goes and obviously the tail bit goes in there and you screw down from the top and up from the bottom and it's in place and that's it. And I've got a wasp in here. 
it's dead. <laughs> Let me show you that. Look at that. Can you see that? A bit of wildlife down there. Oh, you're not, you're, it's hard to hold it this way. That thing there is a dead wasp creature. <gasps> so I'm going to squish that a bit later. How did that get in there? I don't know. <laughs> Free bit of protein. There we are. Oh yeah, underside, what we've got on the underside. Unscrew these plates. Put your undercarriage on, screw it up. Now I was going to say the same for the front, but it isn't. That stays like that. That's for the floats. This piece here is where you plug in your nose gear and screw it up. Four screws. And just look at it, it's huge. And as I was saying, that box, it's another one of those really well designed boxes. Every piece of foam is in the right place to hold the right thing. Gaps that were I found in it are basically because I didn't buy the float option. That is awesome. Uh, what I'm hoping is, because I'm not going to be able to build this straight away because I need to find sp hangar space for it, but what I, uh, I'm hoping is that Noel will be able to pick up his after he's been on his cruise. What Noel tends to do is do the unboxing, do a very quick build and then get out there and fly it. So I'm looking forward to seeing his maiden. We, we both spoke to each other, we both said yeah we're going to be getting this when it comes out. I'm really really excited about this and I love it. They fly so well the bigger aircraft. Hello, have you seen the size of this thing? I mean that's by hand. They measure horses by hands, don't they? So that's one, two, two and a half hands high, that fin is. That is absolutely huge. It was the first part from the unboxing that suddenly made me register Man, you've taken a small E-Flight Twin Otter into the shop and you've replaced it with a giant one. <laughs> oh dear. Wow, it's so good looking. And the quality. Okay, yes, it's not quite like the FMS jet where they smooth the surface down. But it's still such good quality. Yes, there are, this does have the little mould markings in. But you're not going to see those. Real hinges. Those flaps that actually come out of the wing. And the ailerons, I don't know if you notice those. They drop down and out. And they're ailerons. It's absolutely incredible. I'm really, really, really looking forward to putting this thing together and um, giving it a maiden. And not only that, but flying it regularly at the field. I've got some spare wing bags, so not a problem with transportation. Even if I just take one of the wings off, I should be able to get it into the back of the car with one wing in a wing bag. But if I have to take them both off, so what? Quick connect, D connectors, and I love the XT60. That's quite good. Yeah, success as well for me. I've got some new success 5000s. They weren't for this, they were for the uh, Cougar. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing this thing in the air. Look at that. Yeah, quality. Well done, X Fly. Uh, and something I will just tag on the end of this. The XFly company is an offshot of FMS. I've spoken to them directly and if anyone tells you they are FMS, it's not true. They are employees from FMS that have left FMS 
and they've gone and done their own thing. So you have FMS on one hand and you have XFly on the other and XFly are maintaining the standards, the quality, the mouldings that they used when they were in FMS. So you've now got two extremely good manufacturers that you can pick aircraft from. On top of that, Freewing, uh, they've leapt forward in quality. The quality difference between their 64mm EDF aircraft that I have, going up to their the biggest 80s, I don't think they do a 70, I think they're 80s and higher's, the quality is superb. So again, they've come on in leaps and bounds. I think it was Ian who was saying the foam models in the last two, three years, they're almost unrecognisable these days. However, be careful. So I got a SU-27 twin 64mm from Flyfans. And their quality is nowhere near Freewing, FMS or XFly. They're just leagues apart. They're in a different league. Definitely be looking at more XFly stuff as it comes out. Always, always looking for FMS. And of course Freewing are now on my go-to list. So I hope you enjoyed the unboxing. It really did take me by surprise. I mean, look at the size of it! <laughs> and I'm not doing that. Look at the size of it. It is big. So thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay well. I look forward to you coming and joining me soonish on another video, be it an unboxing, a maiden, or just flying my stuff. Cheers. <laughs>